My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, so my name is Nathan Webb. I'm the head of the Bullies Be Gone Instagram account, um, and I'm tuning in from Tooele, Utah. Awesome, awesome. So as an adult, can I, can I, can I be bullied on social media? <laughs> Absolutely. What are some of the forms that you see that are the most popular? Well, I mean, with bullying, we have to remember, it's a repeated act, and it's about a power imbalance. So let's say that there's someone who they have a lot of things going wrong in their life, and they see someone who they perceive as weaker online, and so then they cyberbully that person. They will attack that person in their direct messages, just call them names, or maybe put them down, tell them they're worthless, um, just give them a lot of derogatory messages. And with the internet, they can a lot of times just hide behind their computer screen and just say whatever they want. And it makes them feel better because it makes them feel like they're dragging someone down to their level. It makes them feel like they're having some sort of power over somebody else when really they don't. They're just making their life even worse. How come I don't get those messages? What's up with that? How come I don't get bullied? Like, I've been wanting to get bullied for a long time. Like, why am I not getting any of those messages? It's all work-related messages. I'm tired. Can I get bullied a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that you don't have that problem. That's a good thing. <laughs> so, how do we go through throughout this whole entire? Like, if you don't know, would it be correct to say that you are getting bullied because you don't know who you are, and the more you find out who you are, the less bullying you're gonna get because you can't control them. Like, you know, they're gonna say. I mean, people are gonna say what they're gonna say. But how it affects yep. you, I feel like that's where we need to be working on versus us telling people don't bully people. Exactly. Um, so I got bullied a lot when I was younger. And I let it affect me so much because I cared what other people thought about me. Um, and then one time, my dad, he sat me down and he said, do you know who you are? And I said, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, if you know who you are, you're not going to care what those people say. And it's kind of hard for some people to figure out who they are because it's like, it's kind of a really deep question, especially for kids, but adults as well. They're like, well, who am I? And that's the beauty of it. We get to decide who we are. You can think, what do I want people to think of when they think of me? Respectful? Am I kind? Am I, am I nice to other people? What do I want people to think of when they think of me? And then you can go and be that. And then no one else's words can change that truth. And as soon as you can make, like, as soon as anyone can make that mental mind switch of knowing who they are, you know, bullies will lose all of their power instantly because their, their words hold no more weight. And you actually gain some sympathy for them as well because they might hate on you. They might message you. They might do whatever. And they say, hey, loser, go find some friends or whatever. And you can just be like, I'm sorry, man. That's not me. And maybe the reason you're treating me like this is because you don't know who you are. If people discover who they are, not only will it stop people from being affected by bullies, bullies will no longer bully if they knew who they are because they have worth too. They're human beings just like the rest of us. They're just taking out their insecurities on someone else. I agree with that 100%. Every parent should be sitting down with their children and having that conversation of who they are because the more you find yes. out who you are, the better it's going to be. Now, give me two tips for parents how they could do that. Well, one thing is when they sit them down and say, all right, son or daughter or whoever, <laughs> um, what do you want people to think of when they think of you? Like, What things do you want people to remember you for? And they won't be able to answer it off the tip of their head, but they'll be able to think about it. Huh. I want people to think I'm funny. I want people to think I'm nice. I want people to think that I was a good person. All right. What are the kind of things that you think that you would need to do so that people can judge you by your actions and not by your appearance? Well, I should probably do the things that are in line with what I want to be remembered by. And it'll help people to be in line with what they want to be seen as. Because I won't lie, not everybody is in line with what they want to be seen as. I wanted to be seen as someone who was respected and cool in school, 
but because I hadn't been accepted by a lot of different groups, I was pretty awkward socially. I was pretty annoying for a little while because I didn't know how to act in a social group very well. And But once I learned how to be the person I wanted to be, life turned out so much better. And so parents can sit down with their kids and talk about what do you want people to remember you for? What do you want people to think of? And what do you need to do so that it meets up with what you want? Love it. Listen, this is a huge, huge, huge topic. How are you holding up with all the kids being home? So it has been incredibly <laughs> difficult, especially for all this. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a high school counselor for you listeners. Um, and so I help a lot of kids with the mental health crises and stuff while they're at school. But now that we're online, I mean, cyberbullying is just a whole nother ball game in and of itself. Um, but a lot of kids... So here in Utah, we're not in a shelter in place or anything like that. We can still go outside. We're just being asked to social distance. A lot of kids have misunderstood that, and they're staying inside all day, every day, and they're not FaceTiming people. They're not interacting, and it's really, really hard on them. And I keep on trying to reemphasize to them, guys, please go outside. Go on walks. Play with your siblings. Look away from your dang phone for a few hours and spend some time with your family outside. And if you feel like you need to connect with someone else besides your family, FaceTime somebody. Uh, me and my family, we go on walks every day. We have a little two-year-old and he lets us know when it's time to go on a walk. And when we go on that walk, we run into people. We see them from their doorstep and we talk to them. We're like 10 feet away from them. And I try to emphasize the kids that I counsel, you you guys can go on walks. You can run into people on the street and talk to them from a safe distance. You still need that social connection in your life. And it's so hard for kids because they think, oh, it's quarantine. I can't go outside. When that's not the case, people need that social interaction in their life, whether it be FaceTime or from a safe distance across the street, on the phone, whatever it may be. Awesome advice for parents. I hope everybody stays safe. And if you got children, take them out for some distance socializing. Like they got to they gotta get out there and build that skills as a young child so you don't have them come to the universe and they've been in the bubble and then now they come back. Now they don't know what the heck is going on. So I appreciate it. Listen, thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I appreciate you. And we're going to do more videos on this topic later on. I'm just coordinating a lot of stuff. Once the app is out, you and I are going to be talking a lot more. Thank you so much. You got it, brother. Talk to you soon. Stay safe. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye-bye.